All right, so hi and welcome back to Night Hacking. We're still at the Eurodev conference, and we have a new speaker, a new um, a new guest here. So Lizette Sutherland, welcome, That's Lizette, right. and yeah, it's glad that you're here. And could you briefly introduce yourself? Well, what are you doing? What topics are you? covering so I do all remote work all the time so that's, that's the great. topics that I cover yeah and uh, so I run a company called collaboration superpowers and we help other companies work better together remotely and uh, that's about 70% of the work that I do and then 30% I'm the remote office manager for Jurgen Apollo's management 3.0 happy Melly team so okay. I, I could do collaboration superpowers full-time but I find that being the remote office manager keeps me very humble because I get it's really easy to get up on stage and say, this is how you deal with conflict on a mm. remote team. And if you're not practicing it, yeah. you c it's really easy to just sound like you know what okay. you're doing. So it really keeps me humble and I think real, like my mm -hmm. feet are on the ground mm -hmm. when uh, giving out the advice. So, so what yeah. does a remote office manager do because it's it sounds like you know like a, par a, par a paradox or yeah indeed you know the r the an office manager in an office would make sure that the coffee's ordered right. that you know like the files are kept uh, right. in order and just make sure that nothing really people are welcomed and so that's what I also do on the remote team is I I onboard new team members mm -hmm. I make sure that the everybody has the meeting information that the calendar is updated the Google Drive that we use doesn't right. get totally out of control files are kept in the right place. Right retrospectives get scheduled the team agreement gets mm -hmm, reviewed mm -hmm. so yeah just sort of the logistics of running the team so that way the team can just do the things that they're hired to do mm -hmm. and uh, and I just make sure that the team is functioning properly makes a lot of sense if you think about it I would say so yeah of course you would need that more and more the more distributed your teams are I guess yeah, I, w I mean, I'm always surprised that remote teams don't have some sort of a, a manager. People are just kind of thrown together, and then they're off and running. Right. But, it, you know, it's not. it doesn't even need to be a full-time job. Just like what I do is only 30% of the time. So it's mm -hmm. like one to two days a week, maybe. And uh, it just helps a lot. So I, I can imagine, yeah. Yeah, just and keeps things organized. So um, the way that you're working or the, the customers and, and or clients that you're working with, are they usually fully distributed or is it like uh, companies that want to go towards that mode more and more? It depends. So when I first started the workshop, the, which is the way that I help companies, is we have a Work Together Anywhere workshop and the... I thought it would be for small to medium sized businesses, but the people taking the workshop are all multinational companies, mm -hmm. which surprised me because they've been working remotely. I mean, they're multinational companies, right. so like they're working you remotely assume, every day. Right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, what's happening, uh, also a lot of banks are coming towards me, which I find oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what's happening is that banks are seeing other customers moving very quickly, mm -hmm. and they're trying to figure out what can they do to move faster. And also they have to hire, they have hired, a lot of offshore people right. and they need to figure out how to work with them. The other thing that's happening is that they're consolidating their real estate. So they're mm -hmm. going from many different buildings and consolidating into usually one or two headquarters. And what happens then is only 80% of the people are able to fit in headquarters and 20% have to work elsewhere. Right. So they now need to figure out, okay, for these 20%, how do we communicate and how do we stay in the loop? How do we work with our offshore teams better? Yeah, so then so they the come to me for that. Processes of just making that work or making it work in the most effective way. Right. Um, and I've, I, I strategically did a workshop instead of doing consulting because I really am a firm believer that teams know what they need in order to solve the problem. Like I, as a consultant, I could come in and take a look and make suggestions. I mean, that it is an option, but I really feel like if a team goes through the workshop, they come out with their, I call it the super action plan. So mm -hmm. they have like a list of things that they write down during the workshop that they want to try. And teams know how to solve the problems themselves in general. They know what the problems are and they have an idea of the solutions. They just need some, you know, some inspiration, inspiration new ideas. Guideline. Yeah, and also the tech changes constantly. Mm -hmm. It's oh impossible yeah. to keep, there's a new app every day. It's impossible to keep up. So businesses right. are still using, people that know me know I hate Skype for business and people are still using Skype for business. And yeah, there's, uh, there are many better tools on the market than that. Absolutely. So yeah, so I come in and I show them, here's mm -hmm. the tech you can use. Here's a hundred different ideas of things you could try. And the teams themselves then choose what they want. Right. 
but yeah. not forcing something up upon uh, upon the teams. It's more like giving them inspiration and make them coming up with their own plans. Exactly. You come what, up with your what own is plans. What's for them, for their teams and projects? You know, what I learned, so I've been running a podcast myself since 2014 every week and interviewing remote teams for it. And what I've learned is that there is no one right way. Mm -hmm. And what works for one oh, yeah. team will not agree. work for the other team. And I just recently interviewed a team at Red Hat and or a manager at Red Hat. And he was saying all the teams have access to the, so the same resources. Um, you know, they're set up. They've got all the freedom to do the things. And some teams thrive and some teams don't. Mm -hmm. And they've got the same stuff. Right. So it's something else going on there. So, yeah, what I always say is. It's, there's no one right way, mm -hmm. and every team and every person needs to decide for themselves what's going to work for them. And in a way, it's harder because you don't have a top-down manager telling you what to do. Right. And in a way, it's easier because it's not like it's rocket science to make remote working work. You just have to know, yeah, you just have to try a few things and try a few new apps and try a few new t techniques and turn the videos on. That's also right. a good one. Yeah. That, that, uh, yeah, that's true. I, I fully agree. So, um, speaking of that, what what do you think is the biggest challenge, or what uh, uh, folks are typically struggling with when when doing a remote work? Is it the uh, collaboration and communication, or is it the working alone in your home office or in some place just on your own without other people? Um, supposedly around you? Yeah, you know, okay, for teams, it's always communication mm -hmm. because they're all using Skype for business, which hopefully by the time <laughs> people hear me. No, no, but really, teams, it's always communication because the videos aren't on, the technology mm -hmm. is bad, the internet mm -hmm. connections are bad, right. we don't have the proper equipment, right. and it's just a pain to, to connect with each other online. So that's usually the number one problem. And I always find the issue of loneliness intriguing because... It's one of those things, there was also a recent article about how remote working is bad for your health because we're sitting in front of the computers too long, we're too mm -hmm. close to the kitchens, mm -hmm. we're getting snacks too mm -hmm. often, and maybe we should not work remotely because it's not good for our health. And I was thinking, where does self-responsibility come into this? Like, if you're at home and you're really lonely, there are options. There are co-working spaces, hotel lobbies, cafes, virtual yeah. co-working spaces, mm -hmm. right, cafes. I mean, tons of places that you can go to be around and with people. Right. Tons. I mean, there is a co-working space in almost every city in the world. Yeah. So, yeah, literally. Yeah, so if you're lonely, then get out of the house because right. they're not going to come to your living room. Or, uh, you know, w one of the very easy things that people can do is turn on the videos and just have online work sessions mm -hmm. with your colleagues. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I do with a woman in California, we've been doing this for seven years, is... Uh, The lights okay. went out. We have the to move more. Yes, we have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's one thing. Move more. You just said it. Yeah. See. So we've been collaborating for seven years online. She's in California, and mm. I'm in the Netherlands. And what we do is we turn the videos on for the first five minutes just to say hello, check in with each other, and then we turn the videos off and keep the sound on and then continue working together. And sometimes I'm like, hey, like Gretchen. Continuously for a long uh, period of time. Just three or four hours, oh, okay. just like a, a work session together. Uh -huh. And then if I have issues like, hey, Gretchen, I'm struggling with this blog post. Can you help me think of like a great title? Or I have no idea what the SEO words would be for this. Mm -hmm. You know, any ideas? And she can do this same so it's we're working together and that like it's nice to hear each other in some ways because it yeah. feels like she's next to me yeah yeah i fully agree and i, I can talk agree. to her so in a way i always think if you're lonely at home there's mm -hmm. so many options yeah, there's so many ways yeah yeah so it is a problem remote workers do complain about this but i think you know if you're going into the office you don't get to choose mm -hmm. necessarily who your colleagues are yeah. but when you're working remotely yeah, you get to you choose can, yeah, yeah so like get your friends together and absolutely yeah Yeah, I, think I actually did that. Uh, did that as well, a ve very similar way. Um, I was working um, while well, I was self-employed before, and a friend of mine also. And then we were working kind of together, not together on the same project, but together in the same room. Right. Just to force yourself to not constantly go into the kitchen or somewhere else, just to stay there. And we both were super quiet, and we could focus actually better, just because there was somebody else around, but also working. Just y you kind of like challenge each other to just stay there and do your job and focus more and that was super 
ha you know, really uh, healthy for for the project and and super good for us to work in in general for both of us. That was indeed. And you know, my husband tried working remotely or from home, and he yeah. hated it. And what he ended up doing to begin with was he found a client, mm -hmm. uh, one of his clients that had an extra desk at their office. And so he went into their office a few days a week just to like yeah. hang out and work there. Right. So yeah, the problem of loneliness, I always feel like it's our own responsibilities to take care of our own health and our own mental health. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think maybe people aren't used to it because we've been, you know, we've been going to the office yeah. so long and we've right. got the structure has been put in place right. for us we for so long. We have these constraints and we just like kind of dealt with it. And yeah, and now we have the ultimate freedom. Yeah. And I think that people are struggling with that ultimate oh freedom. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Not to say it's easy. I mean, I am also guilty of not moving enough. You know, I snack a lot at home. You know, I'm also mm -hmm. guilty of it. But uh, I also realize that I'm, I'm guilty of it. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting because I also have uh, before heard the argument, which would be logical, that quite the opposite is true. That because you have, let's say, more time, because you don't do, uh, you, you spare the commute time, right? That you can actually have more time to go to, to the gym and work out, do sports. So it would be healthier, right? Or it could be healthier or just to move around, take a walk outside rather than just being, uh, staying in the office. But yeah, it's totally true what you say. If you don't do it then, if you, if you have the freedom, but you, you know, you don't yeah. use it, then of course it's a different story. I mean, it might even get worse, right? If you're then yeah. just sitting in front of the computer the whole time. Putting boundaries in place for ourselves seems to be a really hard thing. And uh, we're seeing that also with the levels of burnout that are happening mm -hmm. now in society. People are totally burning out True. because we can work 24-7 and it's hard to turn those phones off. Yeah. So even myself, I have to say, okay, it's nine o'clock. I'm going to turn my phone off. Oh, I'm yeah, not reading I'm Twitter, <laughs> which I love. You know, I'm right. not, all my news I get on Twitter and I'm just like, right. no, just turn it off and do something without a monitor. And I find... You know, I put the boundary in place for myself, but it's still really hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I do think that burnout is very serious now, and yeah. screens are so addicting. Oh yeah. So it's uh yeah, but it, but there is no boss or mother or manager that is going to do it for you. Right. So we have right. to do it ourselves. I, especially if we love our jobs, right? It then makes it's it especially just hard. so hard to stop. Yeah, <laughs> and if you're in flow, you don't right. want to stop. Exactly. So that's, I mean, that's I admit, if point. it's 9 p.m. and I'm in <laughs> flow, I don't stop. I keep going because flow is such a special state. Yes. yes. Yeah. That's what we thrive after. <laughs> so totally. Yeah, fully, it's fully hard to agree. get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's something to to deal with. That's for sure. Yeah. So um, here for the Eurodev conference. Um, I'm interested, like, wh what is your impression of this, uh, of this conference uh, in general and why you, well, choose this very conference to, to share knowledge, to, to go up on stage and, and share um, your knowledge about the collaboration? Well, uh, I feel really honored because they asked me to come and I hadn't heard of it before, but I've been here and the topics are, I mean, I am for once not the weirdest person in the room <laughs> or not the most far out because I show in my presentations, I show robots and holograms right. and virtual worlds and just to show people where the world of work is going. Mm -hmm. And uh, and at this conference, you know, we have people with chips embedded in their skin and they're biohacking, there's transhumanism there. I mean, it's, uh, it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. It's good to have the, I mean, these are the things that are happening now and it's good to have these conversations and just see what is, what is the world doing right now? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, uh, I love, I am loving the conference. It I is not boring. I fully agree. Yeah. Especially the variety of topics that we see here. And very well organized. That's true. They fed a thousand people at lunch in 40 minutes really good and good he food. healthy food right? yeah that's and good conference coffee as well amazing it's yeah unusual <laughs> it is very unusual indeed no it's a really recommended i mean if you're looking to expand your world view on what's happening in the biohacking transhuman you know programming mm. world this is the place to be absolutely i can only second that and that should be a very good motivation to you folks to well join erdef conference maybe maybe next year yeah, they didn't pay me to say that. <laughs> well, <laughs> me neither, so <laughs> Okay, <that's> great. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks a lot, Lisette. For t t uh, thanks for taking the time for the interview. My and pleasure. Well, for everybody watching, well, thanks for watching. Bye.